Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. And this is question number five from the International A Level Pure Mathematics P3, June stroke October 2020 um, <clears throat> exam paper, which um, this question number this question number five is all about tree identities. And here we're asked to show that sine of 3x is equal to 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. So we've got to take sine of 3x and show that it becomes this. You could, I guess, if you wanted to, also do it the other way around. I think it's easier to start with sine 3x here. Now, in order to do this, what we, what we have to do here, basically, is we have to try to uh, rewrite this sine 3x. And what we can do is we can use what I call the addition formulae. I can split up sine 3x into sine of 2x plus x. So we can say that the sine of 3x is the same thing as the sine of the angle 2x plus x. And the addition formulae, which are in your formula book, which you should know, but in case you don't know, you can have a look at them here. Um, we could use these addition formula from the formula book to split this up to expand this. This does not expand as sine 2x plus sine x. No, sine on its own doesn't mean anything. This has to be expanded using these addition formulae or compound angle formula as they're called. So what we can do here is we can think of the 2x and the x as the a and the b. And you've got sine 2x plus x will be sine of 2x times cosine of x because it's like the a has got the place of the 2x and the b has got the place of the x. So this is like the sine of 2x, the sine of 2x times the cosine of x, and then you're going to have a plus, and you're going to have the cosine of 2x times the sine of x. Okay, so now we have split this up into separate terms and we're getting somewhere because we want to end up with sine of x's not 2x and not 3x so we got rid of the 2x the, the 3x we made it into 2x and x's now we got to change the 2x's into x's now there are some important um formula called the double angle formulae which are not in the formula book but you should know them and for sine 2x it's going to give you 2 sine x times cosine x and for cosine 2x, there are two formulae. One of them is 2 cosine squared x minus 1, and the other one is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Those are the two formulae that we can use for cosine of 2x. All right, so now, of course, we need the one. Um, well, for sine 2x, we have no choice. So we have to break this into single angles. So we have to write this as 2 times sine x times cosine x. And that's that part. And then we've got the other cosine x that's already there. Plus, and the cosine 2x, we're going to use 2. No, we're going to, as we want to end up, as we can see, we want to end up with, with just sine. We don't want any cosines. All of these have got sine in them, sine x. So if we replace cosine 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x, then that would help us to get rid of this and leave us with what we need in terms of sine x's. It's just this cosine x's here we have to deal with. Now this is going to be equal to 2 sine x times cosine squared x and if you expand this bracket you're going to have plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x. Okay so that's so far how this splits up. Now some of you might not understand where these come from. Now these are not in the formula book but you should know them. Okay, and if you forget them, it's not actually too difficult for you to actually find them. So, for example, if you have your double angle formula, which is in the formula book, and you want to find what sine 2x is and you forgot, for example, you can say, let's call this sine, instead of 2x, let's write it as x plus x. And that's going to be equivalent to the sine of x times the cosine of x plus the cosine of x times the sine of x. Now, these two are the same thing. That's sine x cosine x times plus sine x cosine x. So that's going to give you 2 sine x cosine x. So that's where this formula comes from. Okay, so you can say sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And if you want to know where these two formula come from, we can do the same thing here. We can call this the cosine of x plus x, which is going to give us the cosine of x times the cosine of x 
Now here's a minus. When this is a plus, for this this is a minus, the sine of x times the sine of x. Because a and b are both x. That's going to give you cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And then it's up to you. If you want to express this in terms of just cosines, you can replace the sine squared x with 1 minus si cosine squared x. Because we know the very fundamental formula that sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle equals 1. So if I want to write this in terms of cosine squared x, I can replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. So I'm going to get cosine squared x minus 1 minus cosine squared x, which will give me cosine squared x plus cosine squared x, which is 2 cosine squared x, and minus 1. And if I wanted to express this in terms of sine squared x, then I can take the cosine squared x and write that as 1 minus sine squared x. And I'll have 1 minus sine squared x minus another sine squared x, which will give me 1 minus 2 sine squared x, which will give me that. So basically, these double angle formulae can be derived from using these two, uh, which are in the formula book, and also in conjunction with this identity that you should know. All right, so if you do forget the double angle formula, for example, if you is it cosine 2x, is it is it 2 sine squared x minus 1, or is it 1 minus 2 sine squared x? If you forget, you can go back to the basics by using the double angle formula and work it out in conjunction with this um, original identity from last year. Okay, so now, as we've now got this written uh, in terms of how we need cosine squared x, of course we want to end up with sine, so I'm going to use this form. I'm going to use cosine 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So I've got my 2 sine x already here. I have 1 minus sine squared x instead of the cosine squared x uh, plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x and then we can continue and expand this so you're going to get have uh, 2 sine x minus 2 sine well sine x times sine squared x is sine cubed x plus sine x and you're going to have minus 2 sine cubed x. So now we can combine the like terms. So you're going to have 2 sine x plus sine x, which is 3 sine x, and minus 2 sine cubed x minus another 2 sine cubed x is minus 4 sine cubed x. And there we have proved, or we were asked to prove, that sine of 3x is equal to this. So you have sine of 3x is equal to what they asked us to prove from the beginning which is shown here okay so that's the answer to part a of this question okay now part b of the question is very much related it says hence find using algebraic integration the integral of sine cubed x with respect to x between the limits of pi over 3 and 0 now it says hence hence means using what we have just found okay or we just used or just done in the first part or the earlier part of the question so basically it's telling you to use this so even if you did not know how to show this or you got it wrong you can still use this in order to solve this problem and of course you can see here that if i make the sine cubed x a subject of this little equation here or this identity here i can replace it with whatever it's going to be and that is what it's replaced with will be able to be integrated very easily to integrate sine cubed x on its own like this is not uh, possible like that. You have to rearrange it or rewrite it in a form that can be integrated. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sine cubed x a subject. So first of all, I will add sine, 4 sine cubed x to both sides. And I'll also subtract sine 3x from both sides. And that will leave me with this. And then I can divide everything by 4. So sine cubed x equals a quarter times 3 sine x minus sine 3x so now what i can do here is i can replace the sine cubed x with what this what's equal to here so i can have the integral so that i can say that the integral between the limits of pi over 3 and 0 of sine cubed x with respect to x is going to be the equivalent of or equal to the integral of a quarter times 3 sine x minus sine 3x with respect to x and with those same limits. Those will be identical to each other. 
Okay, so now I can integrate these two terms quite easily. So I have a quarter outside, square bracket, and integral of sine x is minus cosine x. The differential of sine x is cosine x, the integral of sine x is minus cosine x. So this is going to give you minus 3 cosine of x, and the integral of sine 3x is going to be minus cosine 3x over 3. So it's going to become, let me just write it here to show, minus the cosine of 3x, and you have to divide by 3, because there's a function inside the function here, and that has to be integrated between our limits of pi over 3 and 0. So we've integrated it now, and now it's just simplifying and substituting those values in. <clears throat> so we're going to have a quarter, and we got minus 3 cosine x plus um, cosine 3x over 3, and we got pi over 3 and 0. Now we can just substitute the values that we need into the um, equation here, or into the expression here, and we can find the, the value with these limits. So we have a quarter times, we got negative 3 cosine of pi over 3, plus cosine of 3 times pi over 3, which is pi, and that's all over 3, and you've got to take away from that Substituting 0 into here now be very careful when you substitute 0 normally like in p2 It would cause the whole expression to because it becomes 0 because we're dealing with mainly polynomials and uh, x terms But here when you put 0 inside a certain functions, it doesn't become 0 so 0 inside instead instead of um, The x in cosine x or well, cosine 0 is 1. It's not 0 So this will give you a value so you have plus cosine of 3 times 0 which is 0 over 3 and simplifying that should give us our answer. Okay, so you could stick this in your calculator and then write your answer down, that would be fine, but I'm just gonna show you the steps that are working here. So cosine of pi over three, that's like cosine of 60 degrees, which is going to be a half. So that's minus three times a half, plus cosine of pi. Now the cosine of pi is going to be, if you think about the cosine curve, that's going to be minus 1. So that's going to be basically minus 1 over 3. Minus 1 over 3. And you've got to take away from that minus 3 times cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so that's 3. And cosine 0 is 1, that's going to be plus a third. Okay, so we're almost there now. So you've got a quarter times, and you're going to have uh, minus 3 over 2, uh, minus a third, and minus, you're going to have minus 3 plus a third, which is going to be minus 8 over 3, because that's 9 over 3, uh, minus 9 over 3 plus 1, yeah, minus 8 over 3. So we're going to have here a quarter, we've got minus 3 over 2, minus 1 over 3, plus 8 over 3. We can combine these, we can make this into over uh we can make them all over 6. This is going to be minus, if you make this over 6, you're going to have to multiply by 3, so it's going to be 9 over 6, minus 9 over 6, minus, if you make this over 6, you have to multiply by 2, so it's going to be minus 2 over 6, and that's going to be plus 16 over 6. So running out of space here. Now we've got plenty of space. Okay, so now we can finalize, finalize this as a quarter, times you got 16 minus uh, 2 which is 14 14 minus 9 which is going to be 5 so you have 5 over 6 so you end up with 5 over 24 okay let's just make sure of that that's minus 7 minus 7 plus 16 is uh, 9 that's right yeah 16 minus so that's 16 minus 11 which is 5 that's right sorry 16 minus 11, that's minus 9 minus 2, which is minus uh, 11. 16 minus 11, which is um, 16 minus 11, which is 5. So you have 5 over 24, that's correct. So this is the correct answer. And in case you weren't sure, supposing you weren't sure, sure whether you've done it right or wrong, you could use your calculator and do a little check. Okay, you could go to the beginning, the question in the beginning, and these calculators, you're able to do this, and it's not something which will be... Um, you know, penalized for you. So you could write this as, I mean, as long as you show your steps, uh, there's no problem with you checking your answer. 
Um, so you're going to put sine of x. Okay, and I'll put another bracket. And I'm going to cube this. Let's see if this works. Sine of x all cubed. And I'm going to put the limits of 0 and of pi over 3. So I can put pi over 3 here. And let's see if this gives us an answer. Yes, it gives us 5 over 24, which is what we found. Okay, so it's very um, useful for you to check your answer. Now, if you just wrote down 5 over 24 and you did sh and you showed absolutely no working, you would get zero marks for this. Okay, so you have to show your steps. Okay, and you see this is just a way for you at the end to make sure so you can be relieved that you've got the right answer. Okay, now this is like the way to to solve this problem. Um, when they gave you this kind of like um, expression beforehand, however, they might give you a question like this, and they might not give you an expression that it you know breaks down into, and you might have to integrate this you know from first principles. And if you did that in this question, you're not actually following the instructions, although they did in the marks scheme, except this being done in other ways. I'm going to just show you for the sake of just like revision and just in case um, questions come up in the future, how to integrate this without having this identity already given to you and to do it in, in a slightly different way uh, using the reverse of the chain rule, which is part of the pre P3 topic. So I'm going to go to the next page and take this question with me and show you there. Okay, so for this question, uh, as I mentioned, the other way of doing this is to rewrite sine cubed x using um, rewriting it first as you've got pi over 3 and 0 rewriting it as sine squared x times sine x and then after that you can continue to rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared x times sine x dx now we can use the reverse of the chain rule here because we see that what's outside of the function is the differential of uh, no we haven't finished yet sorry we have to continue first we can expand the bracket now and you're going to get sine x minus sine x times cosine squared x dx now what we can do is we can integrate sine x that's something pretty, pretty simple Okay, the integral of sine x, as we just learned earlier, is minus cosine x. And here we have a situation where we have cosine squared x, which is like um, the main function here is cosine x all squared. Okay, and outside the function is the differential of what's inside it. So the main function here is something raised to the power of 2. And we integrate that by raising the power by 1 and dividing, increasing the power by 1 and dividing by the new power and then multiplying the denominator by the differential what's inside the function and we can see that because you have something of the form this if this is called f of x what's inside here is called let's say this is f of x what's inside here is f of x and this is f dash of x you can see that basically what's inside the function and outside the function that what's outside it is the differential of what's inside it so i can use the reverse of the chain rule to integrate that so here i'm going to have if I integrate now, I'm going to have sine x becoming minus cosine x. I'm going to have minus. Now, as I mentioned, this is how I'll, I'll just show you how I, I like to write it down. This is sine x times cosine x cubed. I've raised the power by 1. Divide by the new power, which is 3. And by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, the differential of cosine x is minus sine x. Differential of cosine x is minus sine x. You have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. That gives you minus sine x. And that's between the limits of pi over 3 and 0. So that will now become minus cosine x. And the sine x will cancel with the minus sine x. You're going to get a plus, And you'll end up with um, cosine, cubed, cosine x all cubed. I'll, I'll leave it like that for now because it will be easy for us over 3 and the limits are pi over 3 and 0 so hopefully this will give us exactly the same answer that became a plus because there's a minus here as well so let's let's see what happens when we complete this so we're going to put pi over 3 instead of x 
So we're going to have here minus cosine of pi over 3 plus, and you're going to have cosine of pi over 3 cubed over 3 and minus, and you're going to have here um, minus cosine of 0 plus cosine of 0 cubed divided by 3. Okay, so let's see if we get the same answer. We should do. So that's going to give you a cosine of pi over 3. So you've got minus, um, that's going to give you a half. No, that's cosine of 68 minus a half. And that's going to give you a half cubed. A half cubed, which is an eighth over 3, which is 3 eighths of 24. So plus 1 over 24. Minus, and you're going to have minus cosine of 0, which is minus 1. Plus, and that's 1 cubed over 3, which is 1 third. So we're going to have minus 1 over 20. Let's, let's, uh, let's combine these two together. This is going to be, um, you can make them both into the same over 24. This is 12 over 24. So minus 12 over 24 plus 1 over 24 is going to give you minus 11 over 24. And you're going to have minus, and this is going to be minus 2 thirds, because you have 3 thirds minus 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3, which is minus 2 over 3. And that's going to give you minus 11 over 24 plus, you multiply by 8, so that's going to give you 24. And that's going to give you 16, which gives you 16 minus 11, which is 5 over 24. So you get exactly the same answer, okay, by integrating it in this manner. So um, in this particular question, what was intended was for you to do it in the way that was the way I showed you before, which was this way here, using the identity that they told you to prove. Okay, because it says hence. That's what's intended in the question, and that's the better way to answer this question, um, you know, in this particular context. But sometimes they might ask you this question out of the blue, just like this, without any identity that they've made you make it equal to, and you should still know how to do it. And this is the way to do it. You split it up into sine squared x times sine x, change the sine squared x into 1 minus cosine squared x, and expand the bracket, and you'll have two terms which you can integrate. The sine x becomes minus cosine x, and this can be done by reversing the chain rule, okay, by recognition. So you see that the main function here is cosine x all squared, something squared, and outside the function is the differential what's inside it. So you can use the reverse of the chain rule to do that, and you get the same answer either way. Okay, so that's the answer to question number five. I went on a bit for this question, but that's just in order for you to understand um, a bit better. Okay, so um, I hope that was clear. Now, if you would like to watch other videos from this particular paper, they should be in the playlist, which should appear somewhere in this region over here. And the playlist for uh, trig identities and also... Uh, actually for integration, trig identities, I'll put two playlists, one for trig identities and one for integration. Okay, somewhere in this area. And on the top of the screen, you'll see the card that might take you to some other P3 type paper. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.